Tonight on Y News. Senators express dismay over confusion in the implementation of the Good Conduct Time Allowance or GCTA law. The House Appropriations Committee warrants of a delay in the passage of the proposed 2020 national budget after the withdrawal of the General Appropriations Bill from the House Plenary. And two-time champs, Judiciary Magis, eyes Final Four, slot at UNTV Cup Season 8. Good evening. Bureau of Corrections Chief Nicanor Faildon insists he did not sign the release order for Calawan Laguna Mayor Antonio Sanchez. Grace Cassin reports why. Officials from the Department of Justice and Bureau of Corrections attended a Senate hearing today on the Good Conduct Time Allowance or GCTA. In the first document Senator Panfilo Laxon presented, it was stated that ex-Mayor Sanchez should be released through GCTA. Faildon admitted he signed the document but clarified that it was intended to start the process of Sanchez release but it was not a release order. I signed a memorandum of this release. This is a memorandum. This is not a release order, sir. Yes, sir. I signed a memorandum of release is starting the process of uh, the release of any PDM, Your yes. Honor. It says here, submit report of compliance to the Office of the Director General of the Bureau of Corrections within five days from the actual date of release. Copy furnish the chief documents section. This is not a release order still? Sir, I have said there has never been a release order because I recalled it. The process was never completed. I will not debate it. I will not debate with you anymore. Anyway, the documents won't, won't lie. You know? And you admitted already that that is your signature. Yes, Your Honor. So there's no point debating on that whether... Is, that is my whether... signature. That appears to be a document I signed, but the process of uh, okay. the release was never completed. Okay, that's fine. Your Honor. As for the second document Senator Loxon presented, he said it was used to release a rape convict. The senator said this is similar with the first document he showed with Sanchez's name in it. I cannot remember ordering uh, release of, because I do not really distinguish what cases this PDL is. Well, I'll show you the release order, sir. Senator questioned why Sanchez was entitled to GCTA, although he was caught in possession of illegal drugs in jail in 2006 and 2010. Faildon explained that based on the existing law, Sanchez is entitled to GCTA, though he committed multiple crimes. It can only be suspended during the month that the infraction was committed. In the succeeding month that uh, uh, they behave well, uh, the granting of good conduct time allowance will now resume, regardless of uh, the gravity of this offense. Former Bucor chief and now Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa defended the Bucor officials on the alleged GCTA for sale issue. Hindi talaga qualified yung mga tao niyan. So, itong mga tao na ito, tinatanong ko, pagbaba ko, sinong sabi niyo na nagbibinta ng GCTA? Sinong nakabili? Bigyan niyo ko ng pakala kung sino. At talagang nuupakan ko yan. Sir, wala kami may bigay, pero balita namin sir, mayroon daw garoon. O balita lang yan, puro hersi. Lawmakers in the Department of Justice are convinced that the GCTA law is vague and there is a need to amend it to disqualify convicts on heinous crimes. We would rather that the enumeration of heinous crimes be included there so that there will be no room no at area. all for any doubt on what is covered or not. Okay naman po yung gusto ng batas na mag ma commute yung mga um, um, sentensya ng mga prisonero pero hindi po yung dapat sa lahat. Meanwhile, Senator Bongo assures that Sanchez will not be released based on the directive of President Rodrigo Duterte. Sinabi niya kay Buford Pueldo, sabi niya, do not release. At ang sinabi niya, uh, order from the higher authority. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Bureau of Corrections Chief Nicanor Faildon maintains he will not step down from his post despite calls for his resignation. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. 
Bugor Chief Fael Don believes there is no reason to resign, although the public is enraged because of the release of a number of heinous crimes convicts. At the Senate hearing on the issue of GCTA, Senator Riza Ontiveros reprimanded Fael Don that he should not just release prisoners like murder-rape convict ex-Mayor Sanchez. When asked when he'll be stepping down from his post because of the wrong implementation of the GCTA, I respect the question of the Honorable Chairman. And I, I would uh, defer that question to the appointing authority. At sa tingin nyo po, dapat ba kayong mag-resign o hindi kayo dapat mag-resign? I believe no, ma'am. You believe no? Yes, ma'am. Bakit po, do you, do you believe that you're doing a good job, you say? Yes, ma'am. Meanwhile, Feldon confirmed three of the seven convicts for the Chong sisters' rape slay case had been released. But he said he cannot recall whether he personally signed the release orders of Hosman Aznar, Alberto Caño, and Ariel Balansag. Four of the convicts are still in jail while Francisco Juan Laranyaga, Filipino-Spanish citizen, had been extradited in Spain and is serving the remaining years of his sentence there. According to Senator Panfilo Lacson, Correction Superintendent Maria Fe Marquez signed the release order of the three convicts last August 16, but Feldon should have approved their release orders. In 1997, Mary Joy and Jacqueline Chong were kidnapped, raped, and killed in Cebu City. Thelma Chong, the Chong sister's mother, also urged Feldon to step down. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Lawmakers expressed dismay over how the Good Conduct Time Allowance law has been implemented. Nel Marie Bohok tells us why. Senators believe there is misinterpretation of the GCTA law. In particular, is the coverage and how the computation is done to shorten the term of an inmate's imprisonment based on good conduct. The following month, magbe-behave ako. May minus na naman akong 60 days dahil dalawang buwan akong behave. So it applies to whatever criminal act, whether it is rape, etc., which... Obviously, it's absurd. Senator Ralph Recto, in a Senate hearing today, questioned the authority of the Bureau of Corrections chief to order the early release of a prisoner. The title alone says, who grants time allowance? Tagabigay lang ng time allowance at tagabilang lang, but not to release. For Senator Francis Tolentino, the Department of Justice and Bucor should have immediately taken action on the issue on the implementing rules and regulations after the Supreme Court ruled in June 2019 that the said law should be implemented retroactively. Oh, bakit inuunan niyo yung uh, joint manual? Kesa dun sa IRR. According to Senator Bongo, President Rodrigo Duterte himself urgently called Fildon after receiving reports that former Mayor Antonio Sanchez will soon be released under the GCTA. Mrs. Sarmiento, sinabi niya kay Bucor Fildon, sabi niya, do not release. At ang sinabi niya, uh, order from the higher authority. Based on Bucor's data, 200 inmates have already been released based on good conduct. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The Philippine National Police, or PNP, expresses concern over the release of over 22,000 prisoners, including almost 2,000 heinous crime convicts due to the Good Conduct Time Allowance Law. April Senadosa explains why. The Philippine National Police will arrest ex-convicts who have been released under the Good Conduct Time Allowance or GCTA law should the court order it. According to PNP Chief Police Director General Oscar Albayalde, the PNP cannot do anything if certain convicts passed the GCTA law but argued their activities must be scrutinized. This comes amid reports that alleged drug lord stands sacked despite being inside the new Belibid prison. Sila pa rin naman ang nagko-control ng drug trade, even uh, sa labas or even na nandun sila sa loob. We should really be very careful dito in uh, validate, validating uh, the conduct of this, ano, these people. According to the PNP, the Bureau of Corrections can ask for recommendations from them concerning the list of convicts that will be given early freedom.
due to GCTA. Ayos ay yan, uh, so that they'll know the, the gravity, no? yung kung anong offense nitong tao na to. At saka yung uh, involvement niya. Kung illegal drug yan, then uh, we'll know the the extent of his uh, involvement in the illegal drug trade in the country. Na, all, not only in the country, but also elsewhere abroad. The PNP chief clarified they have no established protocol yet on how will they receive the list of convicts that will be released from prison. He plans to have someone from their ranks to coordinate with Bucor and the Department of Justice. April Senedoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. The Bureau of Immigration assures that the four Chinese drug lords who had been freed due to good conduct time allowance credit remain under their custody as the DOJ reviews the GCTA guidelines. My Bermudas will tell us why. The Bureau of Immigration, or BI, says the four convicted drug lords are treated equally with their fellow detainees in Camp Bagong Diwa. Regular, they are part of the detainees. May mga detainees tayo, iba't ibang mga nationalities naman yan. Nandun ang, det ang detention natin, nandun sila, accounted sila. At uh, nakikita din natin, sa, sa, kasi nasa Camp Bagong Diwa po yung detention center, even sa labas po natin, mayroon din mga, uh, we ask also assistance from the PNP, may naka from the PNP. Deportation proceedings of Cham Chi Tue, Kin San Ho, Ching He, and Wu Hing Sum, who were freed from the maximum security compound in June, have been suspended temporarily. This was based on the directive of the Department of Justice or DOJ, while they are reviewing the amended law. If there are foreign nationals na sila ay nakabiolate ng immigration law, subject for sila sa deportation. Kaya ang ating pong Detention center, they, they are detained awaiting for their deportation. Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara says foreign drug lords who are under the BI's custody may be brought back to the new Belibid prison. But they can assure this only once the DOJ finalizes their review of the GCTA guidelines. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Two-time UNTV Cup champs, Judiciary Magis, I, the final four in this season of the League of Public Servants. They landed seventh last time and want to step up their game. They say they are more confident in their campaign towards another championship. Bernard Dadis details why. A more prepared, more complete Judiciary Magis are ready to fight at the UNTV Cup Season 8. The team plan to fight back and grab more boards with their new big man Ryan De La Cruz. Uh, gagawin na lang namin yung mga kaya namin at uh, gagawin namin lahat para manalo. They will maximize another addition to their roster, wingman Eric Marcos Dionisio. I can play point guard but then uh, since we have a lot of point guard here, I can play uh, support which is number two or uh, yeah, uh, shooting guard. Joey Yabut of the coaching staff say they are more practiced this time to expect improved chemistry in their hard court battles. Sana uh, makabalik kami sa top four uh, para naman sa fans ng judiciary. Babawi kami sa season 8. 12 teams will compete in this season of the league. The games open on Monday, September 9 at the Mall of Asia Arena. Burger Daddy's UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. House Committee on Appropriations Chairman Representative Isidro Ungab fears the passage of the proposed 2020 national budget will be delayed. Joan Nano explains why. After learning that Deputy Speaker Congressman Luis Rey Villafuerte withdrew the General Appropriations Bill or GAB, House Appropriations Committee Chair Representative Isidro Ungab sent him a letter. Ungab told Villafuerte the withdrawal of the GAB will result in the possible derailment of the passage of the proposed 2020 national budget. He also emphasized in his letter Apple Production Unit and the National Economic Development Authority have completed the printing of the copies of the GAB to be distributed to congressmen. If you change the gap, then you will be conducting another set of budget hearings. So, mat delay talaga. The general appropriations bill is a photocopy of the NEP. It is the same budget. 
Representative Ungab added this might also raise doubts among their fellow lawmakers on possible altercations or insertions of pork barrel. Villafuerte, on the other hand, says that he withdrew the GAB since the filing of it is still premature since the budget briefings of various government agencies are underway. Parang pangitignan na hindi pa nga tapos si file na, di ba? Parang, you know, uh, masyado naman pinapastrat. Uh, tinatatanggalan na kami ng, uh, ng uh, you know, power to, you know, hear and uh, to make suggestions. Under the rules of the lower house, the conduct of budget briefing should be settled first before the filing of the GAB. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. House Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano says the House leadership remains committed to passing the budget pork free and on time. The Department of Tra the Department of Trade and Industry or DTI expect to lower prices of rice as an effect of the rice tariffication law. As for the prices of sugar, canned goods and other basic commodities, there is no expected increase. Vincent Arboleda explains why. From the previous price of 39 to 40 pesos per kilo, the DTI expects the price of rice to go down to 32 to 33 pesos per kilogram. Inihintay natin yung kasagsagan ng epekto ng rice tariffication law para bumaba pa yung bigas. Pero so far, meron naman tayong nakikita na na 35 pesos per kilo. According to DTI Undersecretary Ruth Castello, the expected reduction in the price of rice is due to the supply of imported rice in the market and an increased competition. USA Castello added that although they are expecting an increase in demand for some select products, they do not see enough reasons to increase their prices. Kung mas mataas yung demand, mas marami silang mababenta. Hindi nila kailangan itaas yung presyo nila dahil tumataas rin ang demand. The prices of agricultural products in the market, including pork, remain stable. Hingin nila yung NMIS permit kung sa wet market sila pupunta. Hingin, siguraduhin nila na certified yung baboy na binibili nila or any, any agricultural product na karne, la, kagaya ng manok. The DTI official added, the prices of products in supermarkets are also being monitored. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana says the Philippines can trust China but needs to be cautious when dealing with talks on maritime dispute in the West Philippine Sea. April Sinadoza explains why. China has agreed to refrain from all provocative actions that would create conflict in the disputed territory. The two countries also agreed to form working groups and a steering committee composed of Philippine and Chinese foreign and energy ministers for oil and gas explorations. In a statement, Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana says he has no reason to believe that China will renege on any agreements. For now, the Philippines and China have no agreement on the West Philippine Sea issue. According to the defense chief, the country's relationship with China is not circumscribed by the West Philippine Sea issue. April Seredoza, UNTV News and Rescue. Quezon City. It's the last quarter of the year and the holiday season is just around the corner. Streets will be busier, so as shopping malls. But in Metro Manila, buyers fill not only commercial centers, but also footbridges. What with the many stuff sold on these elevated pedestrian lanes? But how must footbridges be used according to authorities? Let's find out from this report. Now that the holiday season is just months away, places of convergence and public roads are expected to be busier and more crowded. Just like footbridges, which are supposed to be free spaces, but are now turned to vending areas, which often pose danger. Hindi natin masisisi kasi yung publiko na naghahanap ng convenience sa kanila na bibilihan ng malapit. Minsan yung mga Lumis sa footbridge, si binababa lang, tinatapon sa panel, sama ka. Yung pagdating ng bear months, eh, hindi na dumami yan kasi baka mamaya, mas marami, mahirap ng alisin. For the PNP and the MMDA, to resolve this, the local government's intervention is needed. Kaya nga, ang uh, mas magandang approach natin dito ay through co uh, coordination with the local government unit, uh, limitin ito mga illegal vendors na nasa kabi ng mga footbridge para maiwasan ang bibili doon at hindi ito maging mag-debt 
for the Commission of Crime. Ang maganda niya, magkaroon ng ordinansa uh, ang uh, local para pag yung ordinansa na yun, pwede ipatupad ng police, pwede silang uringin. Mas ma- mapapaiting, mapapalakas natin yung pagpa- pagpapatupad ng batas. Nino Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Mayor Isko Moreno wants strict implementation of the curfew ordinance in the nation's capital. This after 22 minors were caught loitering Sunday night. The parents of minors who will violate the city ordinance will also be penalized. Harleen Delgado reports why. Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso signed a memorandum today ordering all barangay chairmen and police commanders in the city to strictly enforce ordinances that prescribe curfew hours. Under Ordinance No. 8547 signed in 2018, minors are prohibited from roaming the city streets from 10 p.m. up to 4 a.m. Parents of the minors may face fines or imprisonment as per Ordinance No. 8243. Parents of apprehended minors aged 15 to 17 years will be fined 2,000 pesos or one month imprisonment. Parents of children aged 13 to 14 will be slapped with a 3,000 peso fine or three months imprisonment and a 5,000 peso fine or up to six months imprisonment await parents of children aged 12 years old and below. Uh, paano namin nalaman na may magulang? Eh kasi ito rin yung mga batang na-aresto namin o na kuha namin o nasagip namin uh, a few weeks ago. So ibinabalik at balik lang ng mga magulang sa kalye. The local chief executive has also directed the Manila Police District Special Mayor's Response Team to identify the source of solvents used by the so-called solvent boys. Mayor Moreno added, even those who sell solvent to minors will be held liable. The mayor also has this warning to barangay chairman in the city. Pag hindi sila tumupad sa kanilang tungkulin, meron din silang pananagutang administratibo. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Department of Tourism, or DOT, waved the Philippine flag high and proud at the annual Big Festival held in London. Dennis Damasco tells us why. Locals and guests experience Filipino culture at the Big Festival held on August 23 to 25, 2019 in Cotswolds, Kingham, United Kingdom. The DOT showcased colorful Filipino traditional attire, foods, live rondalia music, and cultural dances at the event. Some even enjoyed the karaoke. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. I like all the different the different things that you've got going on. Oh, Philippines is a fantastic place. We normally go to Cebu, which is where, I, which is where my wife is from. Um, and uh, yeah, it's great, the food's great, the atmosphere is great, people are very friendly, it's a, it's a brilliant place to go. The crowd also got excited with the giving away of holiday prices and the promotion of Philippine tourist destinations. I think this activity was uh, very worth doing to, uh, to promote the Philippines. Like I say, I'd love to go to Asia and it's um, put it in front of the mind. It's the Philippines' first time to join the annual feast, initiated in 2011 by UK celebrity chef Jamie Oliver and blur bassist Alex James, a cheesemaker. The UK contributes the largest European tourist arrivals in the Philippines. Dennis Damasco, UNTV News and Rescue, London, United Kingdom. An old fruit vendor in Cebu has gone viral after he was paid a fake 1,000 peso bill by a customer. Netizens came to the rescue and helped the old man. What would you do if, despite working hard, some people do bad things to you in return? This is what happened to 76-year-old Solomon Alfanta. According to Angeli Mabanta's Facebook post, a customer bought bananas worth 100 pesos from Solomon and paid with a 1,000 peso bill. Solomon gave the 900 peso change. To his dismay, he found out the 1,000 peso bill payment was fake. Netizens who saw Angelis post 
pitied Solomon because despite his old age and hard work, a person had the audacity to deceive the old man. Many extended financial help to the old fruit vendor afterwards. He received 52,000 pesos from different people, locally and overseas. Another netizen gave him a cell phone. It's always good to know there are people who do good, even to strangers who need help. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. And to complete the most significant news for this day, Y News continues. Here are the top stories. Tropical Storm Liwayway maintained its strength as it moves at the eastern part of Luzon. Pagasa, located the center of the storm, is located at 320 kilometers east-northeast of Kasiguran Aurora. Packed with maximum sustained winds of 65 kilometers per hour near the center and gustiness of up to 80 kilometers per hour, it was moving north-northwest at 30 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone wind signal number one has been raised over the province of Batanes. Liwaiwai, however, remains less likely to make landfall in the country. The Weather Bureau said Liwaiwai is forecast to exit the Philippine area of responsibility or par either on Wednesday or Thursday. Aside from Liwaiwai, a low-pressure area was spotted west of central Luzon and it might develop into a tropical depression. As of 4 p.m. Monday, the LPA was located at 500 kilometers west of Iba Zambales. Between tomorrow afternoon and Wednesday afternoon, the YY may bring light to moderate with intermittent heavy rains over Batanes and Babuyan Islands, while scattered light to moderate at times heavy rain showers due to the southwest monsoon may affect Ilocos region, Cordillera administrative region, and central Luzon. Pagasa advised residents of the aforementioned areas, especially those living in areas identified to be highly or very highly susceptible to floods and rain-induced landslides to take precautionary measures, coordinate with local disaster risk reduction and management offices, and continue monitoring for updates. And uh, for the news abroad, as the second strongest Atlantic storm on record an inch closer into the United States, some Florida boat residents plan to ride out Dorian while hoping for the best. Nomer Piñarada details why. Ned and Lisa Key were well aware that the second most powerful Atlantic hurricane on record was heading for them. Having watched the weather radar on Sunday at a Florida marina from the boat they have called home for the past 20 years. Even so, the couple had no intention of evacuating their sailboat as the monster Category 5 storm turned westward with maximum sustained winds of 295 miles kilometers per hour. I will not get off this boat during the hurricane for any reason at all, save a human life. Millions of people from Florida to North Carolina were bracing for Dorian's possible landfall or for the storm, which crashed into Bahamas on Sunday to veer north into the Atlantic Ocean. At least seven counties issued mandatory evacuations for some residents, including those in mobile homes, on barrier islands, and in low-laying areas. The National Hurricane Center said that even a glancing blow from Dorian could bring torrential rains and damaging winds to Florida. The Keys had stocked up on food for themselves and their pets and had a 60-gallon water tank as well as a generator and solar panel to ensure their power stayed on. Ned said they made it through Hurricane Irma, which hit Florida in 2017 as a powerful Category 4 hurricane by staying up all night then tying the boat down with lines. It looked like we had spider webs on a boat because we had so many lines out. <laughs> Dozens of Floridians who live in the boats and marinas along the Atlantic coast and Brevard counties were rushing to secure their vessels on Sunday, strapping them to docks and removing canvas coverings from decks as Dorian spun towards the state. Several boat residents said they had decided to leave their vessels and stay with their family on shore rather than ride out the storm, even if they knew their entire livelihoods might have been washed away when they returned. But the Keys who shared their boat with their dog said they could not afford to lose their home and felt they had the best chance of weathering the storm if they were present to tend to it. It makes us put more lines on the boat. It makes us pray a little harder. It makes us, you know, do the things that are necessary to stay afloat and, you know, faith without works is dead. You can't just have faith in God and sit down and go to sleep. You've got to do things. You've got to help God out. He's got a lot of people to take care of. 
So we do our part, he'll do his part, and we have faith that it will be okay. No more Peñaranda, UNTV News and Rescue, Florida, USA. Actor Kevin Hart suffered major injuries in a car accident in Los Angeles early on Sunday morning. Hart, 40, was being driven in a 1970 Plymouth Barracuda shortly after midnight in Mulholland Highway when his driver lost control of the car and it tumbled down an embankment. The California Highway Patrol did not elaborate on the nature of Hart's injuries, but TMZ reported that he injured his back. The driver, Jared Black, also suffered major injuries in the said accident. Hart, who is known for his stand-up comedy and comic roles, was taken to Northridge Hospital Medical Center and the driver was taken to another hospital. Investigators from the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, or CAAP, this morning went to the site where a medical evacuation aircraft crashed in Laguna Province. Sherwin Colobong details why. CAAP investigators have recovered the black box of the 350 medical evacuation aircraft that crashed Sunday afternoon, hitting two resorts in Calamba, Laguna. Tinitingnan pa lang namin yung, ano, yung crash site. Tapos... Pag ano kami kung uh, kukumpunihin namin, gano'n. Analyze pa yan ng ano, yung manufacturer, gano'n. Kahit kami mismo, anin pa namin, uh, alamin pa namin kung anong situation ng ano, black box. Sir. The investigators have also spoken with witnesses who said that even before the 11-seat plane crashed, some of its parts had separated in mid-air. They are now in the process of recovering other parts of the plane. Tapos umuusok na siya. So may may nakita namin ng kalasan na. Talagang mababa siya eh. Mm. Hindi siya kataasan. Tapos rinig niya rinig niya yung sound. Tapos umuusok na siya. Gray ang usok niya. Akala ko mga papila na kadaulog yung pala pakpak na. The medical evacuation plane was flying back to Manila from Dipolog City, Sambuanga del Norte. Nine passengers were on it. None of them survived the crash that resulted in a fire that raised some residential houses and a Goho resort. Two residents were injured and rushed to the JP Rizal Hospital. The bodies of four of the plane crash victims remain at the St. Peter's Chapel in Calamba City. Sherwin Kulubong, UNTB News and Rescue, Calamba, Laguna. Boxing champion Manny Pacquiao launched his very own cryptocurrency on Sunday at a free concert in Manila. The 40-year-old boxer who defeated Keith Thurman to win the WBA Weller Welterweight Super Championship in July hopes to cash in on his PAC tokens, which will allow fans to buy his merchandise and interact with him via social media. The PAC token will be listed on Singapore's Global Crypto Offering Exchange and counts Pacquiao and ex-Liverpool and England soccer star Michael Owen as private investors, along with Sheikh Khaled bin Zayed Al Nahyan, a member of Abu Dhabi's ruling family. It is the world's first celebrity cryptocurrency. How would you feel if you are in a flying when you are in a flying lesson and your instructor suddenly passed out at the controls in mid-air? Well, a student pilot in Australia had this experience. Let's watch this. Western Australian man Max Sylvester made a distress call to air traffic control about an hour into his flight on Saturday when his teacher collapsed beside him. Operators at an airport in Perth helped him guide the aircraft to the ground. Sylvester was later praised for his quick response and composure. In his emergency call, a recording of which was later made public, he describes his teacher's condition before taking instructions on flying the plane. It was his first time to operate the Cessna aircraft. It was more stressful to the people on the ground than it was for him. Uh, the only stress he had was he had a passed out individual next to him, the instructor was passed out. So he had to get him off the controls and then we got him ready to land. Student, great pilot. Tower, great tower. I'm telling you, you don't get that cooperation very often. Sylvester had taken two flying lessons prior to the flight, but it was his first encounter with the aircraft and he had never tried a landing before. 
After circling the Jandakot Airport in Perth for nearly an hour and of practicing approaches, he touched down safely on the runway at the airport where his family and emergency crew were waiting. The instructor was taken to hospital in a stable condition. There was no damage at all to the plane. Matter of fact, it was a perfect landing. I've had worse damage on on uh, good flights where nothing went wrong. Uh, it was really, I couldn't even ask for better. Chuck McKelvey, owner of Air Australia International, praised both the student and pilot and the tower for their good cooperation. Kat Tumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. And for three straight years, the world's oldest active scuba diver broke his own record by plunging to a depth of 42 meters for 48 minutes. Nina Armilio has the story. A 96-year-old World War II veteran celebrated his birthday on Saturday by breaking his own record as the world's oldest active scuba diver for the third year running, plunging to the depths of the equivalent of a 15-story building to explore a shipwreck off Cyprus. Ray Wally, who turned 96 on August 28, plunged to a depth of 42.4 meters for 48 minutes, beating his previous record of 40.6 meters for 44 minutes. Underwater images showed Wally and other divers sitting on the hull of the submerged ship as fish and occasional turtle swam by. If I can stay fit and still dive and my buddies here will dive with me, yes, let's do it again. Wally, who lives in Cyprus, was a radio operator in World War II. He successively broken two previous records he held in 2017 and 2018. He is originally from Port Sunlight in Northwest England. Oh, it's just unbelievable. I say I've been diving now for 59 years and these are the sort of dives that you remember because there's so many divers with you, it's just unbelievable. A documentary on his life, Life Begins at 90, will be shown at the Bosnia-Herzegovina Film Festival this September. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news to September 2nd, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. Yes, sir. I signed a memorandum of release starting the process of uh, the release of any PDF. It says here, submit report of compliance to the office of the Director General of the Bureau of Corrections within five days from the actual date of release. Copy furnished the chief documents section. This is not a release order still? Sir, I have said there has never been a release order because I recall it. The process was never completed. Okay. Change the gap, then you will be conducting another set of budget hearings. So, mag delay talaga. The general appropriations bill is a photocopy of the NEP. It is the same budget. Tapos umuusok na siya. So, may may nakita namin ng kalasan na. Talagang mababa siya eh. Hmm. Hindi siya kataasan. Tapos, rinig niya, rinig niya yung sound. Tapos umuusok na siya. Gray yung usok niya. Tinitingnan pa lang namin yung, ano, yung cross site. Tapos... Holy! Magano kami kung uh, kukumpunihin namin, ganun. Analyze pa yan ng ano, manufacturer, ganun. Kahit kami mismo, anin pa namin, alamin pa namin kung anong situation ng ano, black box.